Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. So this is um, Sister Lisa. Yeah. So can you? This is of course, as you, you you know yourself, Sister Lisa. You have been doing the interviews yourself with the reverse, and now you're being interviewed, right? Um. So tell us about yourself, about your name, and the you know when you became Muslim and all this. Yeah. Yeah, my name's Lisa. Um, I'm Chinese. My my parents are Chinese. Yeah. Um, I was officially Muslim in 2017, so not too long ago. Uh, although it does feel like a, a lot longer. When did you go to China? 2017. Begin, wow. Uh, mid, Honestly, uh, right? Okay, let me stop you from here, right? Um, and it, I have to tell everybody this, right? About your journey, not you. I'm going to tell you, tell them for you, right? Subhanallah, it's like you want one of my students that has progressed so fast right and is of all from allah of course right that within two or three years right um not only did you learn how to read the quran and you also like now you are practically um alhamdulillah helping a lot of sisters in reading the quran right um and not just that right in terms of the prayers the deen and all this right so in a sense that you are practically also in charge of the sisters in steps of Allah. Um, at the same time, in terms of the um, work-wise and all these in terms of um, outside the deen, right? You're also helping other people. So a lot of things happen within such a short period of time. And this is amazing, right? Of course, we, we always praise Allah regarding this, right? But this is something, you know, I have, as you know, we, we have this set of interviews, uh, questions in the intro, but I had just have to tear it to one side, right? Because it's different this time, right? Because for the sh such a short period of time, you have made such a tremendous progress, alhamdulillah, right? So can you inform me or inform us? Why is it so? Alhamdulillah. I mean, I can, you know, look back in my past, you know, my, my life just growing up. I grew up very, very quickly. Um, you know, I have been quite independent all my life. And I think I've always had that kind of survival instinct within me and everything I do, I, I act with urgency. So that's just that sort of that background or context. Uh, when I did, you know, come to you and took my, when I did take my shahada, I actually didn't which, which, which wasn't planned, of course. It wasn't planned, that's no. Not, um, right? that's you were supposed to take shahada with the imam in the morning. <laughs> right and the imam was busy of course right yeah and this is, is all in allah's plan right alhamdulillah when, okay, I, continue. Go, when, sorry. I look, when i look back at how you know um you know allah has has actually put people in places like yourself you know who's been a massive influence in my life you know uh, when i did take my shahada my mentality back then it was very different to, to how it is today i didn't really have the intentions of wearing hijab you know learning arabic i didn't even know that was sort of obligatory upon myself um i i kind of wanted to be a liberal muslim actually at the time <laughs> just just based on the my my past you know i was very yes. kind of free i was just you know very much in you know just enjoying life really in, in that sense but it wasn't until i met you um that changed everything okay. yeah yeah and not, not only that right lisa is like the amount of effort that you put in right it's it's different from many of my students right remember that you know we have we have our steps Allah retreat in in darussalam of course in this house right in which is once every two weeks right but when there are no retreats, you, you travel all the way from your house, right, to come to, to Darussalam in order to, you know, to improve your Arabic and in terms of Deen. Remember, we, we came we, and we had all this a lot. We have a lot of sessions um, at the beginning stage. Do you think that plays an important role in your um, develop now and development until today? Most definitely. Um, everything I do, I think consistency is something that um, is really for the long term, you know, building a strong foundation. So, you know, initially when I came to, to, to Jerusalem and, you know, sought knowledge from yourself, um, it really um, affirmed, you know, what, what was required of me to actually become, you know, a strong Muslim. You know, obviously it wasn't just about learning the, um, the Quran. It was actually seeing the mannerisms of yourself and Sister Ari. It was actually seeing, you know, being in the company 
of of those who are actually uh, to me now a role model, uh, you know, a, a mentor in many oh, ways. You know, so it's actually through this sort of mentorship and this, um, you know, uh, constant um, exposure to to what a Muslim household should look like. That's what really truly catapulted my huge shift in in my development. I think. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. And um, what are the obstacles that you face at the beginning? So, okay, for example, how, how do you felt the first time you wore the hijab? You know, for me, when you understand why you're doing something, it becomes very easy. You know, for me, when you understand who's commanding it to you, you know, it's not just, you know, a human being saying, you know, to cover yourself out of, you know, um, you know, inferiority or anything like that. It's actually from Allah, you know, that the Lord of the world, you know, what, how could you ever, you know, how could you actually disobey in that sense when you understand who's actually, you know, calling you to do so? So, alhamdulillah, yeah. it was a very quite a, a gradual step. It wasn't something I did overnight, but certainly the more I realized, you know, the, the reasons why to cover and obviously coming from, you know, a, a background where, you know, you know, you're supposedly kind of, um, you know, society loves to dictate what you should wear and what you shouldn't wear. For me, when I understood um, the the actual, you know, importance of wearing hijab and how it actually preserves a woman, how it actually elevates a woman's status, that was enough for me to make that transition. Mm. Alhamdulillah. And, and I'm sure you know, right? I mean, every revert go to different stages of development, right? So do you think um, a proper support is important? Because, you know, I mean, there's not many groups that are supporting this reverse. And um, there are people who, without the support, they actually goes back to their old ways, or we call it Jahila days and all this, right? Most definitely. I mean, even myself, I, I know myself personally, you know, I was in a very different environment before I was when I was Muslim. And for me, I, I always say your environment is actually more powerful than your willpower. And so being in the company of, of like yourself and, and our class, you know, it really and having that support, having someone who can hold your hands, having someone you can call upon, having someone who you can relate to and, and, and you know, and lean on in, in times where, you know, it, you might not know what you're doing. And, you know, having someone who can actually say you know what it's okay just do this or do that and for me just to learn from others in that way is so helpful having an example um not not you know just reading off a book um you know actually having someone who's actually more superior in terms of knowledge someone who's more um you know experienced in in you know in their journey as a muslim i found that to be actually life-changing alhamdulillah so how how do how does islam now change your life in terms of everything about your work about um, how you see your future and all this. How, how does it in Islam impact your life? Oh, massively. Um, I mean, there's so many layers to my development, you know, certainly in terms of um, how my outlook in life. Before, you know, as a non-Muslim, you know, what is there to, to, to do other than to chase the dunya? And, you know, the, the narrative of society is that, you know, success is all defined by materialism. It's all defined by, you know, the, the confinements that, 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 you know, the people put you, you know, in, inside, which is, you know, not very liberating at all. Um, for me, the biggest, biggest impact it has is actually I think for me it's liberation is actually liberation because I can certainly see how my life was you know although I felt that it was liberating then it's not until you realize actually oh you know you probably there's a lot of shackles around you you know you you're kind of constantly seeking the approval of, of others whereas you know the most biggest life-changing lesson for me as a muslim is that i don't fear anything else other than than allah i don't actually feel like i should love anyone i don't think i could love anyone more than allah and you know having just one objective um, morality system this is for me this is actually something that i've always wanted because you know, there's constant changes in laws, there's constant, you know, diff, um, changes in things around you in society where you question, is this the right thing to do? And so Islam is the perfect system. And for me, it's just so easy to navigate through the whole thing because, you know, there's references that we can, you know, look into. There's the, the Quran, there's the there's the um, the Sunnah that who we look to for any decision making in, in our lives. So for me, that's been the most life changing, I think. Um, 
um, on a worldly level, um, the way that I conduct my business, the way that I conduct my, you know, affairs with people, interactions, it's, it's elevated, I think, you know, in terms of how I like to see myself in terms of, you know, a human being, how, you know, I wouldn't want to cheat anyone I wouldn't want to lie to anyone I don't want to be dishonest because of my fear of, of the consequences you know not just in this life but certainly in the hereafter as well so what what are the obstacles that you face usually um, obstacles, so, um, so alhamdulillah I think Allah has made it easy um, in many ways but of course it doesn't come with obstacles I mean for me on a personal level I think for me it's the people. I mean, I, I am I'm very much a people's person, as you know. So I did have a lot of friends, you know, from, um, you know, before I was Muslim. For me, that was the most difficult part, disassociating myself from them. But in a way that's gentle and not a, in a way that's aggressive, I think, you know, that hopefully also helps, you know, in terms of giving to our as well. But the main obstacle, I think, was probably giving up, you know, friends and associations. Okay. And, and that's quite important, isn't it, really, in order to... Uh, because the, if if you have friends that are not um, conducive to the Islamic environment, right, then it would not be helpful in terms of, well, at, at the end of the day, we know purpose of life is to worship Allah, right? Um, if friends are not in tune to our purpose of life, then it would somehow either, um, it's an obstacle, right, to, in our purpose of life. Isn't it true? Definitely. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not easy when you, you can't actually say to someone, you know, sorry, I can't be your friend anymore because obviously mm. we, we don't do it in that way. Um, but at the same time, you know, when in the context of the Day of Judgment, we know that, you know, we'll be resurrected around, you know, those who were, were, were you know, amongst. And that's something, you know, we need to really sit there and reflect on ourselves. You know, do we want to associate with, you know, you know the, the likes of, of those who may not um, be calling us towards Tawheed, which is actually, you know, something that, you know, it's a fundamental uh, concept in Islam. So that's a question that I had to ask myself. Yes. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was never done in a malicious way or, or aggressive way. It's just, you know, more of a gentle way. Um, and if yeah. I did, you know, ever associate myself with anyone, it would be for the sake of obviously calling them in, in a gentle way. Okay. So what advice do you have for people who are searching for the truth? My advice for those who are searching for the truth, that's a very big question. Um, I think certainly everyone is different and I don't think there's a one size fits all formula. Um, what I would say is in, you know, for kind of general advice is truly ask yourself, what are you doing here? You know, what are you doing? You know, everyone is a slave to something, right? So yes. if you're not a slave to the one who created you, what are, what, what are you a slave to? So, um, and I think that's a really... Um, it's, it's a question a lot of people they don't want to think about because you know it, it, sometimes the truth hurts you know they don't want to admit that they're, they're you know a slave to, to, to you know say money or whatever but for me the biggest question I'd you know advice I'd give someone ask someone is um, say to someone is first of all ask yourself who are you a slave to um, and if the answer isn't Allah then you know what is the purpose of being a slave to money, for example, and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of operate from that place. And hopefully they'll kind of derive to the conclusion that the only way, uh, you know, to live this life is to be, a, a, you know, a slave of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Jazakallah khair for your inspirational uh, answers or response to all the questions that we asked. Um, now, one last thing, of course, right? Um, one word. How would you describe the hereafter? The hereafter, for me, um, I always look at things in the context of the Day of Judgment. It's going to be a very difficult day. Uh, it's not. It's going to be a very long, you know, event. Um, it's. It ultimately is the day where ultimate justice is um, is served. I believe. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah, uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward you for all your efforts, yeah, for helping the sisters. And sorry, before we end, right, we also know that you have also your own gum tree, isn't it true, that you're inviting people to, the, to Islam? And, and, and I know that it is at the top of the, the list. I mean, it wasn't the intention, actually. I mean, when you do something for the sake of Allah, um, and I pray that Allah always keeps me sincere, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it just never ceases to amaze me how Allah manifests himself. And just, you know, now this wave of people are, um, you know, discovering Islam, you know, through this means, it's, it's amazing, incredible to see and witness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jazakallah khair for your time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide you and of course, your family members, right, in the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, fulfill your goals and dreams, right? 
and allow you right to get the best place in the hereafter. Amen. Right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.